and welcome to Tax TV. Uh, as always, it's great to have Luke on. So, Luke, great that you can join us, mate. You're welcome, mate. Uh, yeah, pre season, uh, games cancelled behind closed doors, uh, seven out thumping at Port Vale, uh, which kind of probably put a, a mask over it, kind of thing. But again, so many issues going off at club, uh, both on and off pitch, Luke. I mean, what's your take on it, mate? Um, to be honest. You know, I last spoke to you um, when Duff were linked to Gunnar Swansea and then he went. Um, I think overall, it, you know, it's um, been... Um, I, I, I'm fed up at being in the same position, mate. I feel like we're back at square one again. I feel like... I, I've, been trying to think, I've been trying to process it and absorb what's happened over the last few weeks. Um... And, you know, I, I can't, I, I always try to think what other football clubs have as, you know, much up and down, you know, turmoil as us. And I can't think of any, you know, off the top of my head. Mm. The, the stability that I was crying out for for years seemed to come back last season. The people that ran the club, I felt, got what the fans were on about and, and their worries and concerns and actually started to put something in place where, it was sustainable with the signings that we'd made last year, Cadden, Connell, Norwood, um, players are a repute. Um, and I feel like we've gone back to we've gone back to making the same mistakes again. And it, it, you know, it's I think it's like a form of self sabotage in my opinion. It it feels like I I don't I don't know what where to begin, mate, because there's so much that's gone on. I, I can't really I don't want. I'm not going to point fingers at people personally because you know mm. I, I know the the people that run the club. You know they've got eyes and ears everywhere. So I'm not going to call out people personally. Mm. Um, but but I, I believe that at the same time, I, I just don't think that the mistakes that that were made and then we, we felt I felt there was some form of accountability last season with the way that we moved forward as a football club. I feel like we've gone back. I feel like we've gone back even further than when we were in the championship and mm. it's it's frustrating, it's maddening, but also I am not surprised either. Um, we have got people that run in the football club that some of them I feel have got the best intentions for the club and just don't have any experience of football and so therefore are going to make mistakes. Um, but I also feel that there are people that are part of the football club that don't want to hear anything but positive news. And if it's anything that's a form of constructive criticism, and a lot of the time it's rightly so, they don't want to know. They only want to hear positive stuff. And for me, you know, that's not the way to go. You know, as a football, as a, as a fan base, we've been hurt time and time again. My trust is, is at an all-time low. Maybe from before, from the previous regime and regimes before. Um, it's not just the last season it's, it's been building since really 2018 I would say um, so it's not just something that's knee jerk reaction but the stability that the club that the club needs it, it isn't there and it, it goes from having somebody that's head of recruitment that has never played the game mm. that has never had an experience of English football before they came into the country and, and so therefore he's going to make mistakes Going to get it right sometimes in terms of transfers like last year, but I also put that to the fact that Michael Duff had a bigger say on transfers than Neil Collins currently does. And I feel like we've gone back to rote in terms of we've gone back to making the same, it'll be right, kind of, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Doing everything on the cheap again. Mm. And to the point where we are shortchanging ourselves and we, I, I am not looking at this football club at the moment and thinking what they are saying is actually going to come true because there's 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 one thing saying something and there's another thing doing it. And I, I don't believe a word that they're currently saying. Their actions are speaking louder than words with the transfers. Um, you know, I felt like we shot ourselves in the foot with the appointment. Look, I hope it works. But, I don't, you know, there were people out there that I felt better suited to us. And also I felt would have would have brought us a sense of, you know, kind of carrying on from where we left off from rather than just coming in. Again, it's a risk because if you get it wrong, you're back at square one again. For me, the remit for him and for the club was promotion. I don't care what anybody says. If you get to a final at Wembley, 
you should be wanting to get automatic promotion the year after. And the comments that were made on Friday were that we aim to be back in the championship for next season. But their actions are showing anything but because they are not putting together a squad that is good enough for the top 10 in League One at this moment in time. And this time before in the wind, end of the window and what they usually do is they try, they'll try and make up for it in the last week. But for me, again, we are shooting ourselves in the foot. We know every single pre-season is unstable. We, we do things last minute. We don't do things before the start of the season. And I understand that Duff went and they didn't have a say over that and they had to bring somebody in. But at the same time, I do feel that we we don't help ourselves either with the recruitment. We we leave it to the last minute. We're very reactive, you know, to to situations where I feel that we should, you know, if we had some, you know, I've been calling out for a director of football for years because especially, you know, somebody that knows the game and it doesn't have to be somebody that's played for us or anything like that. I just feel that that would be very good as a good link between the head coach and, and the chief exec and the people that run the football club. But, but there is a form of delusion at the moment where the people that run the football club believe that the decisions that they are making are, for the, are correct. But we are making too many risks, too many gambles, too many risky decisions that could backfire. And, you know, we'll go through those with the signings. For instance, the two centre defenders that we brought in are not good enough. Mm. Um we, you know, we should be looking towards better footballers than that. And that's, with all due respect to them, they are not ready to play at this level. Um, they might come good in a few years, but we have not got that time. Yeah. I don't want to be in this league any longer than we have to. If we mean to go into the championship, show it. And, you know, we've never asked this thing about, oh, that means spending money and financial fair play. We've never gone beyond those means. But there's means and ways of going about it to be successful at this level. We very nearly got there last season and I don't understand why there was a formula that worked last year with a blend of youth and experience. This thing that Khalid goes on about, about a 19-year-old can play 200 games at league, at league level. I could play 100 games for Wordsby Bridge, 100 games for Aversley Rep. They'll probably yeah. want to sign me, by the way, if I played for, at that level because most of the signings have been of that stand. Well, those defensive signings are at that level at the moment. Mm. Um, but what I'm trying to say is we're, we're lacking leaders and we had leaders last year, and the, there's there's two that's gone in in Anderson and, and Norwood. One of them was expected, one of them wasn't. Mm. The the quick we seem to love to just get rid of players as soon as possible. Um, we can't wait to sell them. Like rather than having something in place where we we got somebody ready to come in, so yeah, you can go, but immediately we got somebody in just like for like. I, I don't mm. understand why we keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Um, it's a bit, to be, to be honest with you, mate, I, I am I am at the point now where I am, it is a form of apathy now where I expect every, I expect this to happen because they, they are so, their heads up their own ass so much that they can't see what's going on. And it's not me, I don't, I don't want to come on here, Neil, and complain every time I speak to you. I am fed up of complaining. I want to be, I would just want to be as much of a positive person and, and, Saying things as they are, you know, well, no, not saying things, but well, saying things as they are, saying but kind of from a positive is, yeah. perspective. I am fed yeah. up of coming on here and saying there's this, this, and this wrong with football club. I am fed up of my football club being unstable. Mm. I'm not being negative because I like to be negative. I hate it. But also at the same time, I cannot sit here and let things pass by when things are openly happening and it feels like that there's, it's, it's okay. It's okay to, to see my, you know, it's okay to see the football club going the direction it's going in, and I, and I can't believe that they that they've gone back to what the it, it, it's so. It's honestly, I cannot believe that they felt. I felt like we were going forward. We were so close to getting to the championship, and then we just we just seem to have gone back. We we've gone back to like twelve months to eighteen months, even before mm -hmm. Duff came. It's like that. Ne it's net like it never happened, mate. Um, last season, in my opinion, that, you know. It's honestly, I don't know where to, you know, I, I'm just, yeah. I'm just completely fed up with it all, mate. You know, pre-season, you know, poor pre-season. I felt that that Port Vale game, in my opinion, was a, was papering over the cracks. First mm. 25 minutes, they were the better side. We get, a, we get, a, 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 we get a goal on the counter. Second before half times killed them off. And fair play to them for obviously putting the foot down, and it were a clinical performance. But you know, 
the signs were there that we were coming for a defeat. Bristol Rovers, we deserved to lose. We were lucky to get a point. And Oxford and Peterborough, no leaders, mate. We've got a captain that seems to just have down tools. Um, he seems to think he's prime Paolo Maldini. He was good for six months last year in a, in a good league one side. He needs to remind himself what level he's at. Yeah. And also, you know, consummate professionals keep playing until they get sold, like an Anderson did, like other players have over in the past. I can't, he just, he just, he's not the only one, but for me, as a captain especially, you know, he should be looking at his performances and thinking, well, even if I don't want to be here, you know, I've got to give it 100% for the club that bought me in the first place that gave me that chance. And it just, you know, from, I feel like we're weaker in so many areas. Um, defensively, I feel like compared to Thomas Anderson going, yeah, Thomas were a loan signing. You know, we've had Cundy and McCarthy out injured and people are just saying, you know, oh, will it, it will be better when they come back? You know, we still need defensive signings now. Yeah. We're, still, yeah. we're linked to defenders still now. We're linked to a lad at Watford and we're linked to a lad at Milton Keynes. So the club are still feeling like they need to make defensive reinforcements, which then again goes to say that the two people that they've brought in are either not good enough because they won't be bringing someone else in. Oh, you know, I, I just don't understand it. Um, strike it, on, uh, Strikers were still short up front. Um, Shaw's not the answer. Uh, Leia Aseka's not going to feature. Um, Dallas is an on-league player that's making a step up. So, you know, you're going to have to give him time and you're going to have to be quite realistic that if he doesn't score goals at this level, there's a reason to that. Mm. Um, Waters hasn't hardly played much over the last two years. Um Cole seems to be the only one for me that's, you know, I can look at and have some form of reliability. Um, I don't know if that's summed it up, mate, but it's just, yeah. it's just a bit of a shambles at the moment, to be fair. Yeah. I think from, like, just going back, I mean, just uh, I'll try and uh, catch up speed. So, I mean, like, like you said, from Wembley, defeat, you know, Duff obviously is gone. Did he know something? Because I've seen people say so. So he's probably knew what were happening, kind of thing. And he's he looked better opportunities. Can you blame him? Not really. You know, if anybody turned around to me and said, you know, there's going to be more money to step up for you, you're going to take it. Ambitious, you know, as a bit of more when he can chew grass in always greener. I I'd like to see him still uh, still be here. Uh, and again, I think from then on, Mads. Well, you, you can't begrudge Mads. I think you're always going to go. Uh, and like I said, Via, he always played. He put his heart on his sleeve. He, he tried his best. He didn't start off. He were rockiest at times. But then you can strip it back and go back. You know, Saul Bauer and Elick. They helped, they helped the lad along. Uh, you're looking at the, the current top now at the minute. Like you said, with Kitchen. You know, Ed's probably been turned. There's, you know, Coventry being interested. But at the end of the day, he's still a captain. Still expects a captain performance out of him, regardless of what, you know, transfer uh, bids are not going. And he still should for a you know, a shift in because other lads are looking to you for inspiration. You've got young Lapita again, another kid who's potentially could be, but again, signing players at the minute, what you're hoping we're going to turn out, all right, rather than signing players that are going to go in and do a job and replace, like I said, like for like playing uh, Williams out of position because we haven't really got anybody for central defence. That young kid who got brought on at weekend, I felt sorry for him because he looked like a fish out of water. You know, give penalty away, yellow card. It would act as depth, 45 minutes a game time is Ed, and yet we'll put him in as a central defender. What? You've got Jack Shepard on bench. What's that said here? You know, he brought him in. So again, there's, I said it right at the beginning of the season. As soon as Mads had gone and Bobby Thomas, yeah, Bobby Thomas wants our player. But, he, you know, you look, lose Brad Collins. So Liam Roberts, the player that's come in, is out of contract. So he's playing for his his life. He's playing for a, a, an improved deal at the end of the season. And again, you look at that defensive unit, what well, last season for us, I believe, but well, probably is, is core strength. We, we kept a lot of goals out. Yeah, Ishtad came in and replaced Collins. As soon as that had gone, you knew it was going we to hurt us because you've got to get that understanding between goalkeeper and defence. The defenders, the centre, have got to know one another's game. Sixes and sevens. And it's no coincidence that you're looking at games now that the goals we're conceding, we're playing them in... Acres of space, you could really pitch a tent up at the time we, we get back and try and block it off. They're just pinpointing it. Then we'll go forward and say, yeah, but we're missing Luke Connell. When Luke Connell come back, there'll be, there'll be a difference. One, Luke Connell's not going to sort out the defensive frailties at bat. That's down to the defensive unit. Yeah, missing Luke Connell, I get that all day long. Then you go up front, 
Ouija go from there. We, we, sign, we seem to be signing players. And again, we're going back to the best transfer window ever. We were getting a lot of players in for little or no money. And we're hoping that we're going to turn out today to make a quick book or two on them. And you're seeing that with Dallas. You're seeing that with all the show. We signed him last season. not really featured. Larry Zaka, most wanted man in Barnsley. Reportedly, highest wage earner of here. He's not even gaining to pre-season. He's not even making on bench when you're playing in uh, Carabao Cup and Papa John's. He's not even making them kind of... So, again, what's happening there? And you understand why his fans' frustrations when it came out at Fans Forum and it's all over socials and on YouTube about a fan calling him out. I'm not coming to come out with all the full thing, but people have seen it about questioning uh, Azaka. Why is he not getting... And again, that's the fans. That, the frustration's building. Last season was so... And I get where you're coming from with this. Last season, you sent that it... Well, yeah, do you know what? The understanding where we're coming from as fans experience is trying to come back a bit, the, the atmosphere, the feel-good factor. And all of a sudden, it's like that big that brick wall we built up, the second down brick by brick and start all over again. It's a rebuild job again. We're going to... You can't afford in this league to just drop well away because we're going to... We seem to just sell players. We'll sell a player or two for that to offset the finances. We're going to... At this rate, we're not going to have any saleable assets... I think as soon as like your kitchen styles, Cannon and Luke O'Connell will probably go. I think after that, you're lucky to get whatever for the rest of the players. And I get where you're coming from because and this and this really ball aches me this like this comment what comes out when people ask Khalid when they come out and say we need an experience this over. And they'll always spin it and like what you said, they can play hundred games at this. What we're missing, and for anybody watching at club, what we're missing is leadership and characters on the pitch. We're missing leaders. We're missing characters. We've got none of that. Even off at bench, and I'm, I know I'm not just belittling players because players have been brought in and put in this position. But when you haven't got no leads and characters on pitch, who are you going to look up to and say, Do you know what? We're going to get us out of this. We're going to get us out of this. There's nobody. You've got a captain who's like Ed's not in it. Norwood, you had Anderson. Norwood knew what, even when he came off at bench, you were riling and getting to the shit house player that he was, they were riling him up. We haven't got nobody like that. Yet, what we'll do, we'll just hope we become. Oh, it's we've got Mr. Rovers, Tom or Oxford. Yeah, we'll win that. We've won seven out at fifth game of the season. You can't, you can't just take that one game and, and judge that on the rest of the season for me. You well, three points. Yeah. Well, one game don't win your one game don't win your promotion, does it? No. You know, look back on it in a few years' time if that was the start of the promotion campaign. But for me, it's just another three points in the end. Mm. It's as simple as that, 1-0 or 7-0. Yeah, we play. We, it's all right having a flash in the pan, but you've got to be consistent. Like, I understand that we had, a, you know, we, Anderson even commented that it was, it, it was probably, it was already on the cards that it was going to go, even if we didn't go up and get promoted by the playoffs. So have something in place. Don't just wait for him to go. Mm. For instance, with, with the Anderson transfer, we had a defender at Luton that we could have gone for, that we didn't go for. It's Sonny Bradley that he went to Derby County He's a leader. This is the thing about recruitment that I don't understand with our club. Yeah, they're coming for Anderson, right? Three million pound. And you say that to them, right? So we're going to be without a defender now, our, our club captain. We're going to have Bradley as part of that deal. Mm. So, and even if they say no, just at least show, you know, because that's where I'm on about, like players that have played at that level that are, that are leaders. We saw what difference Norwood had to the team on and off the pitch last year. Or even other players came out and said it. Yeah. Right? The the comments that I saw on his social media after he'd gone had shown the impact that he'd had because he was a leader. It was something in the dressing room. Mm -hmm. That's the, one of the reasons why we were so successful because it weren't just no, there were other players, you know, that stepped up to the mark. And it's up to the players that are here. I get that at the minute to step up to the mark as well. But some people are natural leaders, some people aren't, and some people are followers, and some people aren't. Mm -hmm. And so for me, you don't just buy a player just on the, on, on the pitch ability. You look at the character. What do they yeah. bring outside? What type of person are they? Are they going to fight for you when the chips are down? Mm. Um, and we had, obviously, Collins had gone. I, di I didn't agree. You know, I felt that, you know, it was one of those situations I felt a bit sorry for him, to be fair, because he did no wrong to be out the side. I sort of just come in, took his opportunity and Duff couldn't really drop him. And yeah. I understand why why we're a bit peed because he probably thought I've stayed here three years through all this turmoil and yet I'm not even getting a game. But I understand it was a bit yeah. of a crap situation. But we still lost Collins. Ice didn't come back due to Duff not coming back. 
Anderson obviously went and Thomas, so you're losing four defenders there. Mm. And it just feels like that we've then replaced him with two lads. I, I, look, I feel sorry for him because yeah. he's got, especially Laparta, he's played every game since he's come in. He's got, tough, he's got tough shoes to fill. He's got pressure because he has never played this level before. Mm. Similar to when Anderson came in. We'd just lost Lindsay and Pinnock that summer and Anderson had come in. Never played in England before. It took him three years to get up to this level. Yeah. It, if we, People remember we Anderson, when he first came in, he were all over the place. Mm. You know, he, he, weren't, yeah. he weren't ready. And but we haven't got, and this is what frustrates me. We haven't got the time to be to be building players, and and waiting three years to be building players up and to be giving them opportunity. And yeah, they learn because because they learn from the mistakes. But you need somebody there with you, yeah. somebody that's been there and done it at this level. Um, and that's what frustrates me the most is that there's this. They've done it before with with, with Solbauer and Ellick and other leaders, uh, but there's it's, it's it's so like inconsistent. Mm. That's that's mm. the thing that does frustrate me the most is, is that it's so inconsistent in terms of the, the transfer side of it, and I feel like our defensive unit were our strongest point last year. It's where we built our performances and results from, and we seem to have gone back in terms of that we had the we had the best one of the best in defensive records in England in second half of last season, and it just felt feels like that that don't mean oh nah. Mm. Um, I mean the goals we conceded at the weekend just poor, poor. And we, we're soft mm. as well. We're soft. You, you know, it's not just defence. You know, for instance, Kane does it, should be better than that. Style should be better than that. There's players that are playing that are starting that, that should be doing better. But I also feel like when, when you've got something behind the scenes where it's not all rosy, you know, I think that also transfers to the pitch. Um just going on back, oh, wait, 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 what you just said behind the scenes, Kane, Kane's comments when he was asked by Radio Sheffield about his contract, you can tell his body language, everything, he do not look right. He just doesn't look right when he's got asked. Well, you best ask board, you best. I've not to do with that. It's not like, a good yeah. look at all. No, not a good look at all. And that shows to me that they're talking about it behind the scenes. It'll be on, it'll be on the training pitch. And that shows to me that the plays that's come in, that the plays that are here don't rate them, because if they did, he won't say that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but he's saying the truth at the same time. It shouldn't have to, you know, it's not, not just me, not just you saying it, not just people mm. on Twitter or whatever saying it, it's players at our football club. Mm. Norwood said it as well Yeah. Um, yeah. before he went. It's more than one more, more than one player, sorry, that is saying it. And mm. it is clear for everyone to see. And, it, you know, we're being linked to players now, like, you know, in Exeter for a million pounds. Um, yeah, that Nombi, yeah. Look, if it happens, it happens. But why, have, you know, why are we leaving it to the last minute? I don't want us to lose two or three games, and then we should be. Do, you know, th this is what I mean. It's just the lack of organisation, mate. Mm. Get it done before. Give Collins a chance. You know, back your manager that you brought in. I feel sorry for him as well. He's come all the way yeah. from America. His family started a completely new life. It, the lad looks like I don't know. It, it, there's times to me where he's talking to me, and he feels like you know. He's actually he, he's saying to, a lot of stuff in it, really, when he's been asked questions. Yeah, he's it's thing, not, and that's not his fault. Like, like no, no. I don't get somebody like he made he made a change against Peter, but he brought Styles off with ten minutes left, and he brought centre defender on a three one. And I'm thinking, well, Styles, are the, why are you doing that though? If you want to win a game or even get a point, keep creative players on. Yeah. And he, he somebody's he brought Cole off, and he was best player up front for us, and he brought him off with half an hour left. I didn't get that. Hmm. Um. I, against Oxford, I didn't, it felt like he didn't have a plan at times. We, we just felt like we were just hoping for something to happen, but I, di I didn't see like a, this is what we're doing. Um, like a definitive, at least I could see with Stendhal and Duff, for instance, even Ishmael, a style of play. Mm. And even if we went down by the sword, I suppose, by if we lost, at least you could say we've got an identity and a style of play that that's, that's how we play. And I struggled to see that on Saturday. Um, we know, underestimated just... Oxford. Yeah, sorry, Lou. Just that go on. I, I thought yeah. I thought we underestimated Oxford because I saw I saw highlights against them against Derby, and they're a good football inside. And yeah, yeah. you know they took the chances, and you know that penalty. I feel sorry for the centre defender. You know he should You know he, he looked like a duck out of water, and he, he were embarrassing. That will not do his confidence any good at all. You know, and it makes me think. Yeah, bring him in, but bring somebody else with him. That's play. You know, if you're going to bring him in, bring someone else in as well. You know, well, so he can learn alongside. Not another, not another lad who's who's not even over twenty three years of age. It's never played at this level to play alongside you. 
then you've got a club captain that don't want to be here. He's trying to do 40 yards, Steven Gerrard passes. Like I said, he needs to remind himself he, he did well for six months last season, maybe a full season. Mm. But before that, he, he, were, he, were, he weren't great at championship. No, no. You know, he, 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 he was poor. And you look what Kitchen were playing alongside Anderson, and Anderson were probably helping him out. We were all poor. They were all poor when we went, when we went down. But mm. in my opinion, sometimes you need to look at yourself at that level. Like Jordan Williams coming out saying, "I want to play." You know, yeah. it was some of the comments there. Look, it's all good having ambition as well, but there's there's a difference between ambition and, and delusion. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's all I'll say on that. Look, yeah. I like you know Williams. Sometimes he does impress me, and sometimes he. He backs out of challenges and a lot of goals come from his side at defence. And, you know, he's not, in my opinion, he's not strong enough. And I think if he makes move up, I think he'll get found out. I think this is his level. Um, but it's not good that you're hear, that you're hearing play, you know, that, like going back to the Kane thing, it, him, him coming out and saying that so openly. And he probably got fined, but I'm glad he yeah. said it because, because it's not just us going mad. Sometimes you feel like we all people going, you know, stop being negative. It's all right. We're not, you know, we're not in admin and all this sort of stuff. I want us to be a successful football club. And I'm sure the players that worked hard under Duff last year probably feel like they gave it their all last year to get to where we got. Mm. And it feels like a bit of a stab in the back, maybe from them, that they're not being supported in terms of recruitment to make the side better and to retain it. Because I feel like we're weaker than last year considerably. Yeah. And like when Nirav said, our ambition is to get promoted, you know, show it then. Bring players in to show it. Don't just bring lads in from walking and, you know, Neem Olympique that got promoted, relegated to French third division, which is like standard National League South. Mm. Bring a lad in that's never, you know, Dallas, you know, for me, it could be another Sean Tutton. You know, that's the way it, it might go. Um, as a free agent, when there's lads out there that are playing in fo football league level there. That, are, that you know that that you could bring in as well. That I, I don't. It just frustrates me, mate. Honestly, um, we we where we where our recruitment's gone. You, you you want to get the crowd going, and it's not the crowd goes wild. It's the crowd goes mild. When every time I see a transfer, I think, right. Yeah. For instance, you know, to even keepers department. Um, look, we've got a lad on loan who's number one. Shouldn't be the case. We should have gone in for Lewis at Bradford. Um, we didn't want to pay the money. Too tight. We linked with a lad at M MK Don's Tucker. We are apparently yeah. not wanting to pay 400 grand. Mm. And, you know, again, that you know, when you're making actions like that and the appearances like that, then that goes back to what Nia Abba said, that we want to get promoted to the Championship. We'll show it then. If you want to get promoted, pay the money, get those players in that you're after, and show intent to those fans that are paying your ad, that are paying their hard earned money to come support you. Because mm. I think at the start of the season, fans were a lot more hopeful because you know we we retained quite a lot of season ticket holders from last season, and on the premise that we were going to strengthen and go again after, as Khalid said after when after the Wembley defeat straight away said we're going to strengthen and go again. Yeah, and we've done anything but, in my opinion, you know we brought players in, but that's the job to bring players in if we lose players. But we're not any stronger than last year. We're a lot weaker. Um, it, it, it's just it's just quite sad, really, that we're we're in this position that at this moment in time, if we get top six, I, I think it'll be an amazing season. Mm. Um, and it's think, it's only early doors. People are going to say it's only early. It's only early. Look, the signs are there. The same weaknesses are there. The same frailties are there. It's quite scary how quickly we folded against Peterborough, conceded eleven goals in three, uh, eleven goals, three goals in eleven minutes, mm. and Oxford as well. We we just seem to just disappear so quickly we didn't stay I, I don't know mate it's just yeah. it's, I, mean, I don't know just going back to the recruitment side of it and we'll get on to yeah. Collins and obviously formation and stuff like that I mean it seems to be we, we need to be like what we're saying there's players being linked now with Barnsley what have got that bit of quality we not that bit of house you, you'd have thought why ask a ball scenario let's go for a bit of quality and add to it like we said we're going to do showing intent but we haven't we've signed a bit of quantity rather than quality no disrespect to players because we're still learning. We all want to do well for Barnes, of course, you know. But you can't be putting the players in that position. Well, potentially could like arm a career and set them back if all else, which is no good for anybody. Player, us a club and fans are, are out. But now you're starting to see, you know, rumours linked in with certain players, non Bay, that lad at MK um, Dons, like I said Lewis at Bradford. Players here, you're thinking, yeah, do you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll do all right. They'll come in and do a job. But again, yeah. until it actually happens, take it with a pinch of salt. Um, 
And again, back with substitutions, I, I get you with that. I mean, Devante Cole, somebody took him off, lost a bit of presence, uh, you know, as presence up front. Do you think, I can't wear this right now. Do you think with Collins still learning with players or thinking where the vulnerabilities are and that, do you, could you see him, I said changing, but alternate formation from the back three to go to more a defensive solid four at back? Because what I'm seeing at the minute in the last few games, the amount of gas we've been left at back has been scary. Absolutely scary. Um, no. Um, I, I think he's got a certain coaching style and that's our real coach. Um, I think if you're going to play Cotter and Cadden, you need to have, you know, you, in my opinion, they're not defensive fullbacks. You know, mm. they both like to get forward. Yeah. So therefore, you need to have a continuous plan. If we don't have the ball, you either need to coach them to get better to get back or you need to have defenders that can defend better outnumbered. Um, we're going to have a lot of defenders by the time Kundi McCarthy come back. Um, but again, you know, Kundi weren't a, a, a regular un, under Duff. Um, he were a squad player. McCarthy were injured more or less one of the first few games of the season, so you can't really, you know, give an opinion on him. But it, it is. It, but also, it, it's very scary how, you know, like you said, so many goals come down from those sides. Um, but also, at the same time, we don't help ourselves. We're giving the ball away. We don't retain the ball enough um, in possession. Turn over a ball's too quick, and then we just look outnumbered. That goal of Bristol Rovers, for, you know, you know that that was just a. It was so poor. I was so I was so annoyed at that because mm. you one nil up away from home. They were the better side. You know, that's a, that's a game you look back on and you think, you know, to to see where we are. You know, hold on to that win, and it, you know. I felt they deserved to win that game with Sir Rovers, but it was just the goal itself were just were just really poor and you know And all those shoulders they probably took their player out to be very thinking it's cynical yellow and just to stop yeah. the play, wasn't it? You know yeah, I mean? we, yeah, and it reminds me a little bit we're very we're very naive and we're yeah. very um honest. Mm. And this is where this is what I mean when we're losing the impact to Norwood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And other and, you know, sometimes having a bit of shit out of it is good. Yeah. You don't have to play honest. You, just, you know, I, I love I love a good yellow card where mm. where, where necessary, where it's not going to be at the detriment of the team. Mm. You know, where where needed, bring a player down, slow the game down, and that's game management and that's leadership, that's experience and that's maturity. Because in my opinion, when you get older players in the side that are a twenty eight or twenty nine, they know they know more I don't know they've got more assurance I think when they're yeah. younger they're still learning they're not developed as people yet so never mind as a footballer mm. and and that's why you need a good a good blend at every successful football club you have players that are various levels you don't just have a, a lot of lads under age I know we've, we've kind of raised the age level a little bit mm. but I still feel we've, we've got a very young side especially in defence now with Laparte and Deja Vigny where they're very young and yeah. they're going to make mistakes. But you know, so therefore, yeah, if they make mistakes, said that they're, they're, that's what they are. But also, that's up to the people that bring them in to have also people that can support them. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, but it's not just it's, it's not just on the it's not not just on the pitch that's gone wrong. Like you, you know, I, I look at I look at some of the like the PR stuff that we, we, that the club don't help with, like openly like taking the piss out the fans like on social media genuine concerns and because we've won one game then the, then it's kind of a bit of a patronising yeah. comment it's like kind of you don't understand like kind of where the fans concerns are it's the fact that they still don't feel that we're, we're strong in that area it's not that they just want to have a, an open criticism mm. and uh, it was kind of tongue in cheek I get that but it's backfired on them unbelievably and, and it's just yeah. the public relations just it, ma it makes me it makes me <laughs> It amuses me really because I think the thing oh, like this will be quite a clever move and it just backfires totally. Oh, um, <laughs> you know, it's I, I don't look. I, I don't give a crap about us having you know these flatbreads and stuff like that and these pints that come up in fifteen seconds. I'd rather spend that money on some footballers mm -hmm. because when you're successful on the pitch, off the pitch follows. Um, and I know they want to make this a uh, you know good match day experience. Well. I don't think it's a good experience for fans that have gone to both games this week, losing three one at home. Mm. Um, you know, I think it'd be a good experience if if, the, if they actually had players on the pitch that kind of backed up what they what they're saying. Yeah. 
Yeah. And look, I want I want the club to do well. I don't want it, I don't want this upheaval. I don't want this, you know, instability. But it does really frustrate me when they say things and do something completely different. You know, um, I want us to be a bit more robust in, in our approach towards players. And also, we have been a bit more robust in terms of turning offers down. Um, in the past January, we've turned offers down from numerous players. Like, you know, with Styles, we've got a release clause. That's good. Rather than just accepting first offer, same with Kitchen, we turned it down from Coventry. Usually, it passed with accept first offer. Mm. Um but I don't think they're in a position that they could sell any more players at the moment because if we did, we'd you know, yeah. especially yeah. in certain positions, we you know we'd look we'd be in real trouble. Yeah. I feel like you know we still need, in, in my opinion, we still need three or four players mm. um, to come in. I still feel we need two centre defenders. Um, I feel we need a striker, and I feel like we need somebody in midfield because Benson is too injury is too injury prone, and you know. I feel we need some flexibility there. You can't just rely on Connell and Kane all the time when Connell comes back. Russell's obviously better than last year so far, but you know, it, I feel we need some somebody in midfield uh, and even somebody at left back to compete with Cadden to push him a bit more because um, we've got no depth out there at the moment in terms of somebody to come in and to, to back them up. So, you know, things might change, obviously. Is it just is it just over a week when they transfer window? But at the moment, mate, it's... Um, it's not been a good start to the season. Those had a poor connection. So, what will happen? We'll tide it off from there, and it'll be a, to be continued when we look. Because uh, you know we're coming up to like forty minutes, and there's been quite some decent content in debate. So we'll get Luke's thoughts in uh, part two about you know where do we go from here? Um, you know, might slate clean and see what he addresses. Because uh, he was touching on the load into getting some play, more players in about three or four different players in certain areas to make it a bit more solidified. So again, uh, thanks for watching. It's been great to have Lou come. We'll begin a follow up on his thoughts in part two. Uh, let us know your thoughts and comments below. It should be interesting. I know that a lot of people uh, like listening to Luke and getting his thoughts and honest open open views and opinions across. So again, thanks for watching. Um, Leave your comments below. I will answer them and let us know what your, your thoughts about part one of part two uh, with uh, what's happening at to the club uh, so far this season. One thing left to say, you Reds.